When it comes to the parkour or combat challenges in Dying Light, be it 1 or 2, um, I don't really care, like at all. It's really just a one and done thing, unless you didn't get gold. I mean, you gotta go for gold, because if you don't get gold, then everybody's just gonna laugh at you. Because like, what are you, some sort of fucking chump? But that's besides the point. Well, not really. It's kind of on the point. And that's because Techland decided to put a few more things in Dying Light 2. And those few things being challenges, well, parkour challenges to be specific. Now don't get it confused, just because I don't care about it doesn't mean I don't find it fun. These challenges do a great job at making you feel like a master of parkour, or just, just, they're just fun. Like, the f look at this, you're in the air bro, don't fall. Anyways, they're fun, just, they're not good enough to be put in side quests. Like, wh what were they thinking? But thankfully, they didn't add them as side quests in this update. They're actually just signposts you go around and activate. There's five in total, and each one are unique in their own way, starting with Gracoy, or Gracoy, uh, I don't, what, what, fuck it. This one is your typical run of the mill, get to point A to point B, running on the rooftops. I mean, you can touch the ground in this one, unlike the others. I don't know if it's just me, but for some reason, the rooftops just look beautiful in this course. More beautiful than normal to be honest. The thing I didn't get with this one from the start is that you have to roll three times in order to get your record counted. So every time I completed it, I just kept getting challenge failed. And I was confused until I just decided to read. Because like, who reads this? Just go for it man, it's a parkour challenge. What else do you need to know? Apparently you need to know how to roll. But my dumbass got godded. Besides all of that though, the course is Alright, I guess. Nothing to go crazy about. But I bet you're wondering, which one is worth going crazy about then? Noviex? Huh? Well then I'll tell you. Calm down, bro, because it is suspension of disbelief. Now, I'm pretty sure this is going to be most of the community's favorite. Probably just because of how free you feel just doing it. There's rope swingings and wall running in mid-air, which just doesn't make any sense. But who cares when you're having a hell of a time? You're going up from down to up to sideways to vertical to horizontal, which is like the same thing as up and down, but just different ways. It's good. You know how Techland really likes to reinforce their idea of your decisions matter in this game? Yeah, apparently just leaving it to the story wasn't enough. They went ahead and added different routes in this parkour trial as well, which isn't the only trial that has it, but I feel like this trial is the one that sticks out the most with it. There's gonna come a point where you can either take a zipline and it'll take you to some monkey bars, or you can just swing from rope to rope to rope. Now the real question is, does it matter what you choose? No, it doesn't. Um, I was gonna make like a whole argument that it does, but before I did that argument, I wanted to see if I was right or wrong, so... You see, I thought that taking the monkey by way was gonna be a lot slower, and that you couldn't get gold. And before I kinda like decided to go all in with it, I decided to go see for myself first, and I ended up beating my record in about 11 seconds, but in the run before I took the zipline slash monkey bar route, I actually just took the ropes. You cannot make this shit up. But no matter what route you take, me and you, I guess we could both agree that this course is at least 10 times better than the water swimming one. That one was so boring and bad, I don't even remember its name, dude. But I may be 100% wrong, and the whole community loves it, who knows? There are some people out there that actually like Hell Raid from Dying Light 1. However, I do like how you swim under the cars. That's like the only good part for me. Now that we just speed ran through that last one, let's go on to Flying Scorpion. This course utilizes a lot of your grappling hook, and if you know about that jump exploit, and in case you don't, I'll leave a link to it. It's a really useful exploit, uh, technique, whatever you want to call it. And it can change the way you play with how much speed it gives you and how high you go. For me, I would say that the difference is like night and day. It's all about just timing. And well, if you can get that technique down, this course is pretty much a breeze. When I say it's like a breeze, I mean it's very breezy, just like if my world was a paraglider. If you have a maxed out paraglider and enough inhibitors invested into stamina, you could literally beat this course without letting go of your paraglider. I don't know how to feel about that, but I personally took that as a challenge. I felt like Techland was laughing at us at how handicapped we are and how much we need to rely on it. 
and so I took it upon myself to try and beat the challenge with a paraglider that doesn't even have a single upgrade. And grappling hook too, just felt like I had to say that. There are more challenges coming in the near future, you know, like a couple months from now, depending on when you're watching this. Now, I don't know if I'm gonna make a video covering that. Like, imagine making a video about, like, trials, parkour trials, and, like, how unique they are. You must be a very big f to be doing that, am I right? Anyways, if you stuck around this long and, like, watch it all the way through, damn, I, I'm speechless. You are a real trooper. Thank you.